Good morning, heart and soul. Thank you so very much, Felicia. That was Felicia Williams Cozy offering our devotional. How very, very sweet. I'm grateful. Thank you. We needed that. Dare I say church? We needed that church. Yes. You know, it's an interesting thing. We are here in the Bay Area, California. We are having a tremendous amount of rain. Now, the truth is, I don't know that it's really a tremendous amount of rain. The deal is we haven't had rain in so long till any amount of rain is a tremendous amount. And so I had to check myself because <laughs> I certainly, pardon me, I was had been praying for rain, not like the rain dance kind of praying. But it had been, I was aware of what we needed, the fires, we, the, the climate, the conditions have changed in such a way that we were more vulnerable in ways that we didn't want to be. And so when the rain started, can I just say it wasn't convenient? <laughs> but I had to check myself because our goal in life is not that life is convenient for us. This is why we're declaring that we're on an adventure in faith. And there's nothing about convenience on the adventure. And so let, can I just say out loud how grateful I am for this rain. It reveals to us the weakness in our structures. You know, we can go along for a good while with the gutters just a hot mess and not notice. But the moment we get that first rain, we realize that all the gutters on our home and in the city needed some work all along. We notice that with our roofs. We notice that with just in all of the ways. This is an adventure in faith, y'all. This is what, can I say, let's begin in gratitude and then figure out the rest. Let's start in gratitude. Thank you, Mother, Father, God. Now, how am I going to get this fixed? Thank you, Mother, Father, God. How am I going to wipe this up? Thank you, Mother, Father, God. How am I going to get from point A to point B without being totally soaking wet? But thank you. It's all in the context of gratitude. Oh, this is like little work for extra credit. This, <laughs> this little extra credit work right here. I know you're doing your spiritual work, but now Spirit has offered us a little extra credit to see how we're going to be with nature. See how accepting we are of life and the inconvenience that it presents to us in order for us to live fully in it. Yeah? I remember, you know, I'm a native to California, and so I, that, the way that translates to the Bay Area, not just California, is that I'm a weather wimp. For those of you from other places, I acknowledge that I'm a weather wimp. Back in the 70s, I, had, I still had not been in snow. I went to New York to visit a friend, and it, we were sitting in a restaurant, and it was, it was snowing, but I didn't know that that was snow. I kept looking. I was facing the window, and finally I thought, what is that? And he turned around and looked, and he said, well, what does it look like to you? And I swear for God, I said, locusts. <laughs> Can I just say I'm also a movie buff? And just so you know, in the movies, snow falls like this. And locust goes like this. <laughs> and so what I saw out the window was going like this. Now, needless to say, he was hysterical. And all the way back to his house, I was wanting to have the snow eggs. He was like, girl, you better come on here because this is not what we do. And I knew our afternoon plans were canceled because it's snowing. <laughs> he was like, no, we still don't do everything <laughs> on the agenda. So I'm, I'm just, you know, it takes what it takes. We don't all get the same orientation. Some of y'all from New York and Chicago, and let me say Chicago twice. Y'all have some, some special relationships with climate that really prepares you. Well, those of us from Berkeley don't. 
But we're still on this adventure in faith and willing to show up. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask them to put up the slide we prepared. And you've seen this before, but I'm going to ask that we would recite together. Now, you're probably, well, it doesn't matter. It's a webinar, whether you're on mute or not. But, but speak up and out. Yes? So you'll be able to see this. I'm going to wait till they, till they get it up um, so that we can recite together this Ernest Holmes piece because it's, it's powerful and empowering. So together, I invite you to affirm with me, the God that is within me is truth, beauty, harmony, and wholeness. Breathe that in. Breathe that truth in. Now, that may not be your real-time experience or the way you sense your relationship with the divine. Let me tell you, this is the truth, though. So where the adjustment has to be made is within your awareness. We're going to continue. Every apparent imperfection from which I suffer is a result of ignorance. Pause for a moment and take that in. This is not blame. This is not invoking shame. This is simply acknowledging the order in the universe, how life gets to be the way it is. And so we honor that and we continue. Because ignorance of the law excuses no one from its effects, it follows that the very power which has bound me, rightly understood and properly used, will produce freedom and then add in my life. Will produce freedom in my life. Ashe. And so it is. So look, I got this hit just a few moments ago. We, you know, we just completed um, end of last week, change your thinking, change your life. And so this hit that, that I got just a little while ago, is to, I'm going to ask the TAs to support me in getting the word out, those individuals who completed the course. Hear me now. I love you all. And I'm calling on the folks who completed, rightfully, successfully completed, change your thinking, change your life. I'm calling you into a discipleship. Now, the word disciple no matter how you have heard it used or what you think it is, the root is discipline. So I'm calling you into a specific discipline. Why? Because y'all have had the coursework. Y'all have had the resources. Y'all know what I'm talking about as I put out the word. And so the TAs are going to support me in getting the word out to you in terms of what I'm going to be calling on you to do. I'm going to ask you to hold heart and soul in a way of your knowing. Look at here. From time to time, more on that later, because the whole idea is that we are, the call for the day is awareness and thinking. It's about change. Okay, so what happens is as we change our awareness and our thinking, we are changing our being, our doing, and our having. So when you understand how that plays, and those of us who were doing the work for that five weeks, we have a little jump start, and that's what I want to expand on. Look, a couple of days ago, um, <laughs> Pam Graham, I love you. I just appreciate you so much. Pam posts for us daily in our communication, in our closed-circuit communication system for heart and soul, a variety of inspirational pieces. And one of them is an old favorite for heart and soul, 365 Days of Richer Living. So from October 22nd, Ernest Holmes wrote, Freely and Joyously, I let right action take place in my life. Ooh, feel that. Freely and joyously. What? 
I let right action take place in my life. That's an adventure in faith. I let right action, not my favorite flavor, but what is for the highest and best, right action. I allow that. I open myself in such a way that that can happen. And here's the part that hooked me. Today, Ernest Holmes wrote, the infinite has arranged more good for each of us than our finite thinking can comprehend. You better ask somebody, heart and soul. Yes. So the divine has laid out a buffet, and we didn't forget the address for where it is. We misplaced the ticket. Don't know where the invite is. You know, you understand what I'm saying? So it's laid out. But from our current perspective, we can't get to it. Because our finite thinking, the way we see ourselves and our worthiness, the degree to which we perceive that we are deserving, keeps us out of a broader awareness. It prevents us from even knowing it's there for us. Oh, that's like, there's a, whole, there's a whole seminar I know to just, let me try to just, it just, this whole idea of what is, well, you see, that's why changing our thinking, changing our awareness absolutely changes our life. Because if you don't know that there is a divine buffet with absolutely everything, the buffet of life, don't just think food. Think health and well-being. Think relationships with, that provide more love, deeper caring, greater pro, uh, compassion, kindness. Yes? So there's a buffet of life that we can't get to because we can't find that invite. Can't find my ticket to get in. And my ticket to get in is my awareness that this is my truth and that I deserve it and that I'm worthy. That's my ticket to ride. But I can't get in without that because I don't think I belong in. I don't believe that I can have access. Sure, I see them doing that, but that can't be for me because I, and then we fill in the blank. I don't have, I didn't have, my parents didn't, my guardians didn't. I didn't even have guardians. I was in the foster system, and it was this, and it was that. And we have all of the data, all of the facts that support us in being how we've been and having what we've had and doing what we've done. I've come to say today's a new day. What did it? Today, the infinite has arranged more good for each and every one of us. But we're going to have to rise up to recognize that this is the truth and that it includes us. Yes? Oh, y'all don't even. There's a part of me just wants to just stay right there and keep Reread that and reinforce it. Well, I'm clear that's because sometimes that's what I need. That's why I'm such an affirmation person, because it's the repetition that helps me. So I'm not trying to put you all through like you learn exactly the way I learn, but if you do, get on board, because we're doing something with this. Look. Ernest Holmes, in Words That Heal Today, one of my favorite Ernest Holmes works, says there's that a spiritual pattern of our being already exists in divine mind. Oh, breathe that in, y'all. Because sometimes we feel like we're trying to build ourselves into somebody, into a new me. And the truth is that the spiritual pattern, a unique, beautiful, divine spiritual pattern of my being already exists in divine mind. Now, I may not have it clearly, 
but it does exist. So as we turn to this inward perfection, which already is, we are whole, perfect, and complete. That's your ticket to ride. For the one who says, well, I can kind of feel some wholeness, but I'm not perfect, you don't get in. You don't get the buffet. You get the part that you feel deserving of. You get that part. Whatever part that is, you break off that part. And you're like, I got this part. But he already told you that you can't even conceive at all. Because your little finite workings of your mind and heart. So here we go. Look at here. He says it responds by flowing through and manifesting itself in us. But it cannot do that until we have expanded sufficiently our self-concept. Our sense of self must be sufficiently open, willing, available in order order for this shift, in order for this awareness. It says its response is not only a response of love, it is equally the reaction of an immutable law of cause and effect. An immutable law, an unchanging law, one that you cannot, your thinking about it does not shift it in any way. How you feel about you has everything to do with the access that you have to the divine buffet. Let me stay with the metaphor. With the divine buffet, yes. Ernest Holmes goes on to say that the great teacher tells us that when we forgive, we shall be forgiven. When we refuse to forgive, we shall not be forgiven. We wish to feel that God loves us and forgives our mistakes. But if we block our own forgiveness by refusing to forgive, how can we hope to be forgiven? Causal. Our forgiveness begets. Our love begets. Our openness begins. Our willingness begins. Our kindness begins. Yes. Our thoroughness begins. Oh, it's all of those attributes, whatever it is you you are wishing that you love in others. Just know that there's an opportunity to claim that for ourselves. Because what? It is a part of the spiritual being the pattern of our spiritual beingness that already exists in the divine. To close that out, he says, it may seem strange teaching, yet measuring it from the standpoint of justice and of cause and effect, this is why I'm so grateful for our Wednesday evening program. Imagining justice is that we're taking spiritual principle and really looking more deeply at the, at the divine human application of it. So he's saying that from the standpoint of justice and cause and effect, it is simplicity itself. But you got to get there. Because if you're not there, it feels very complex. What you talking about, Rev? You don't know my story. You don't understand how hard it is. What you need to know is I don't need to understand that because that's not what we're looking for. Now, if you want me to understand that because you want more of that, That would be the only reason I'd need to understand it, is if that's going to be our program. Because if I don't understand it, I probably can't support you well in it. But do you really want me to support you in your less thanness? So you don't want me to understand that. That's a story that you know you have, but I'm going to encourage you to stop telling it. At least until you can tell it with some detachment. You can tell it from the vantage point of how I got over. <laughs> so you can wait to tell it when you can really tell it from the energetic of, I used to be. I used to think. It used to seem like. But now. So you need a but now part to it. But now. If we are filled with hatred toward others, come on, good Christians. Come on now. I just, 
I'm just going to have to say, come on, good Christians. You just, you just can't make it up as you go. You, you, just, you just can't. You just can't and then argue about who is and who isn't. No, no, no. If we're filled with hatred toward others, how can love flood our being with its light? I'm pausing for your response. How are we going to get there from here? Necessity demands that we forgive if we would be forgiven. When we forgive, holding no condemnation, judging no one, then our consciousness becomes a mirror reflecting the greater consciousness, which is the mind of the divine and the will of love. It's transforming who and how we are. Now, let's be clear. This is not, I'm going to remind you, this is not a mountaintop teaching. This is not, I don't have the banner, Miss Forgiveness. I'm working it out. Now, somebody may say, but no, you do be not. You see, that was, that was specific. Everybody, w- you know, I'm working it out in terms of my own forgiveness practice. Yeah, so. Here we go. Here we go. Um, Love. In the science of mind glossary, love is the self-givingness of the spirit through the desire of life to express itself in terms of creation. Emerson tells us that love is a synonym for God. I often remind you, those of us who, who were, quote, churched, Our little Easter speech was God is love. And that's because it's true. They didn't make up something for the little ones to say. They gave the little ones something so simple, so pure, and so true. We are also told in the New Testament that he that loveth not knoweth not God. Why? Because God is love. Love is free from condemnation even as it is free from fear. Love is a cosmic force whose sweep is irresistible. So look, I am inviting you to believe in love. To believe in love no matter what you think is going on because you always there's something going on and you always have a thought about what that is my challenge to you I implore you to believe love it doesn't look like it it doesn't feel like it it doesn't seem that that's what it is and I'm going to ask you to still believe love believe in love no matter if you can't find right in wrong Just believe in love. Brannis McKenzie wrote a song about it. Here it go. Believe love, believe hope, believe all that the sages wrote. Believe wings will fly again. Believe you are your own best friend. Believe heart, believe joy. Remember your very first toy. Let's make some fun with the gift of your life. Believe all that is you is right say it again I believe say it again I believe say it again and again I believe say it again I believe say Say it again 
believe all that God unfolds is here to love you and to hold. Believe now and what's in its power. Believe it comes at the perfect hour. Believe it's good like tree to wood. It serves a purpose as only God could. Say it again, I believe. Say it again, I believe. Say it again and again, I believe. Oh, say. Thank you, Brannis and Tammy. Thank you, Brannis McKenzie and Tammy Hall. Thank you. Now, very clearly, that was a different song <laughs> than I was expecting. I got it a little, a little confused. Um, today, we're just focused on believing love. Why? Because it makes a difference. What did Brannis sing in the song? Say it again. I believe. Say it again. Keep affirming it. Keep affirming it because in time, your sensibilities begin to shift in terms of what you believe. Think about it now. There's, if you're hanging out with us, the likelihood is you wouldn't always believe in this. You know what I mean? Because this is, it's not new thought. It's truly ancient wisdom. But for many people, it came as new thought compared to what we had been taught for generations, what we had taken on from our parents and grands and neighbors and friends and all of that from our tribe, essentially. Say it again, I believe. Believe what the sages wrote. Let's go to 1 John. <laughs> 1 John 4, fourth chapter. And um, actually, let me just, I'm not going that, there we go. All right, the six, beginning with the 16th verse, 16 through 21. And I'm not going to read it all. I just, and I'm make that just a little bit of an assignment for you. Because I just want to highlight, because what's here is this reminder that God is love. And everyone who dwells in love dwells in God. 
There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. We shall love God. Why? Because he first loved us. And this is not in a human sense. This is not transactional. It's just understanding that we live in a container that is love. That f- love fuels all life. Now here's the thing. So much of what you might hear here. Hmm, I'm trying to decide how to say this. I'm, I'm not inclined to play a, a proving game. Because I don't know that anybody can. You make up your mind, and then you watch how that works. That's that's what I recommend. So if there's something here that you're feeling like, "Mm, I don't know how that could be true, because what I learned was, try it on. Or don't. Decide whether you want to play the game. And if you want to play the game, then try it on for size. See, if I believe this, am I more comfortable in it? Am I, is my heart, am I healthier? Am I wealthier? Am I wiser? What, what's the impact of it? Do I want to change? Because it might be that what you believe works be- beautifully, brilliantly for where you are and where you intend to be. If, however, you are with us today or whenever you listen to this, because you know the the Facebook feed and the the YouTube is going to be there so you can check in. You can change your mind later and go back and say, let me listen to that time she challenged my thinking. You know, I I didn't have no space for her that day. But I'm feeling like, okay, I'm a little open because I'm wanting this to be different. This will stand the test of time. Everyone who loves God, the living one, the strong one, shall love all others as well. It says, brother, it means everybody. It's, you know, it's written in a time where, y'all already know that. So look, I'm going to invite you to go to 1 John and 4. And you can actually start sooner. You can start with like verse 7 and work your way through to 21. And meditate on it. Allow it to to permeate your being, your awareness. Allow it to shift what you believe, how you believe, and how you are in it. Ernest Holmes, in quoting that very scripture, 1 John 4 and 16, who is born of love, pardon me, is born of God, for God is love. Without love, nothing can be accomplished, Ernest Holmes says. With love, our prayers are answered and the gift of heaven is made. The gift of heaven is life and not death, love and not hate, peace and not confusion. We enter this paradise Through what? The gateway of love toward one another. And toward God, the divine, the living one, the strong one. Love is greater than all else and covers a multitude of mistakes. This is our infomercial part right here. Put some love on it. It's broke, put some love on it. It's rusty, put some love on it. It's late. Put some love on it. Whatever it is, we're going to put love on it. (laughs) Some, (laughs) no, 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 no. It covers a multitude of mistakes. Love overcomes everything. Go on with the infomercial part. Love overcomes everything and neutralizes all that is unlike itself. It handles it all over, under, around, and through. Love is God. Oh, we need to know this. We we need to feel this. Have this be our calling, our, the way we stand in the world, our awareness of the world, and, and our place in it. God is love. There is one power, One presence, 
It's God. It's the living one, the strong one. By any name, we know it's love. Wow. But look, here's the thing with this. Although it's love, remember last week, I offered you this visual of divine flow using water. And maybe now that it's raining, y'all can get on board a little better with it, you know, because you might not have really understood what water was last week. But this week, now that we all got wet at some point, you, maybe you can get with the program a little bit. So look, we begin with this awareness because what is it you believe? We're declaring, I believe the all in all. So I believe that there is a divine flow. Now, I don't know the source of any of it, but, and I know that this, what, what you're seeing here on your screen before you, is only a bit of that. Why? Because there's no way to capture the infinite. So this is my finite sense of divine flow. But somebody who's like in it, they're like, oh, Rev, I'm going to send you something. Don't. But you could. I know you could. My, my inbox could be filled with Images of water flowing with greater flourish than what I've chosen. I get that this is simply my finite sense of it. But I'm wanting you to sense this water today is the love of the divine. Oh, so it's, you know, water splashing everywhere, love everywhere. I know you can't see it. You don't know where it is, where to love at. It's just, it's all very complex for some of us because the way that we are living our lives, our experience of life right now is that maybe we are challenged to, to see love and the overflowing of it. I love it that we're challenged. Because you know what to do when you're challenged. You get, get into it. Get into it even more deeply. It's, that, it's challenging that part in you that says, I got to know more about this. I got to understand this. I got to have a breakthrough around this. So we're getting into the deep end of the pool to understand. And what's happening for us is that we are some form of a conduit. So God is is love and is everywhere always present, being symbolized as the water today. But some of us are not even wet. Some of us are able to get between the raindrops even. We are somehow managing in the flood to be absolutely dry, looking around wondering, why does everybody else have love? We are the conduit. So look, in this, consider this next image that there's the divine flow that cannot be contained. You can't, I can't bring you an image of it. Nobody really can. But here's what happens. Because of my thinking and who I think I am and how I'm willing to be, I have converted the all in all into my version of it, which means that, and I could really, you know, I could stand on a pretty high horse and say, you know, look at all the love, because look at how much is flowing. But if you think about it, you know that that one pipe, although it's gushing, is not in any way using up all of God's love. It's not even the the degree, the extent, the amount of love that you are capable of expressing, that we are capable of expressing. And just like we have taken the infinite and we now have it gushing and flowing, sometimes we just not available. Sometimes we just not willing. And we stifle the divine flow of love and all good to a mere trickle. To a mere trickle. And then we act like it's a problem situation for the universe. And in truth, 
what did we establish? That everything that's out of order in my world is on account of my ignorance. See, I'm not believing that we went in and we downsized intentionally. We didn't call the plumber and say, you know what? This flow of love is like way too much for me. I'm going to need you to just downgrade that. Get me some little bitty rusty pipes so I can just, I just want to see just enough moisture so I know the presence. Nobody does that from their conscious intentional. But we do it based on what we believe about love, what we believe about the divine, what we believe about our relationship with the divine, what we believe about our worthiness, our unworthiness, our, what we believe about whose we are and from whence we've come and the meaning that we've given it. See, that's the thing. We are creative and, oh, we can do some stuff. When we get frustrated with our own little thoughts and fears and doubts, that's what makes it impossible for the divine to flow freely through as us. Yes. In this, in this example, in this metaphor where we, where we saw the image of the water flow, I am declaring, and the sages have declared, that God is the river of, of life. God is the river of life, and each of us is what? An inlet to the divine. Each of us is, and we are at choice. We have our personal dominion and will. We decide how available am I to the divine. The divine is the river of life. I am an inlet, but I'm closed for this season. The port is under repair. Or whatever we've said, I'm working on myself right now. I can't be available to love. I'm taking classes. I'm in a program. I'm whatever it is that we're doing so that we are not the inlet. We're inhibiting the divine flow. We're blocking it. We're squeezing it down to a small volume, and sometimes we even stop it. But here's the thing. We can also open up the channels of love through our faith, our conviction, and our hope. Our very love. And in so doing, we then increase the flow. Can you see how we can decrease it? But then we can shift. This is why I'm calling on the change your thinking, change your life disciples. Because there's something about knowing how to make that shift from the constriction to the expansion. Because when it's unblocked, what? It flows freely. That's when we experience wholeness. And happiness. That's when we experience joy and prosperity and health and well being. And it's the infomercial moment. That's when it all is working out. Now, it doesn't mean that we don't have our challenges, but we know what to bring to any and every challenge. That, was, that we know for sure. Ernest Holmes. And Fletcher Harding wrote a piece that I'm excerpting, Real Law is Law of Love. One of the greatest difficulties, they say, in interpreting the teachings of Jesus is that we don't quite realize that profound conclusions were always behind his simple presentations. So he's speaking in parable, and it's just simple, but behind that is law, is deep principle that is infallible for all his works and teachings were definitely and deliberately designed 
for this illumined soul and teacher to show us what the nature of God is and how we are to embody it. We're to what? Change our thinking in order to change our experience of life. What the law, he also taught us what the law of good is and how we're to use it. He told us that God is love, that God is givingness. This is what we're affirming. This is what I'm prayerful that will bring into our consciousness at such a deep level that we really get it and that we live from this. And then again, just like with the flow of water or the flow of love, we know that as individuals, we can delay the time of our salvation, they say. And, and then Ernest Holmes explains that not in this piece, but elsewhere, I just want to make it clear because sometimes I'll, I'll say a word that's not typical for our discourse. So this salvation, Ernest Holmes says, is not a thing, not an end, but a way. So the way of salvation is through our unity with the whole. That's what salvation is. Now, other folks may be interpreting it in another way. In this context, salvation is our surrender into unity with the whole. It's our sense of oneness. He says, and that means the time of complete fulfillment. When we are there, when we are surrendered to the unity with the whole, that is a time of complete fulfillment. We're going to have to try it on to see, won't we? He says, or we may, if we choose, hasten the day of redemption. And redemption, they say, is the split second when, some, when the sum total of our thinking is the kingdom of good. It's that split second when you know that you know that you know that you know the goodness that is God is your livingness, that you are living the life of God, that split second of knowing. See, I don't know that you're going to carry it all week or all month. I don't know that you're going to be able to carry it all day. But in that split second, we are each, that's redemption. That's the return to our, our pure and true selves. The great teacher told us to turn with the simplicity of a child to the love of God, such that in complete faith, we accept life as a thing of joy. Did you hear any condition in that? That's if your landlord is nice or fair, or, or if your, your boss is welcoming of you. No, you just accept life in joy. We think that if the landlord thing works out, then I'll be in joy. We think if the employment thing works out, then I'll be in joy. But the sages would tell you, be in joy and watch the other things work out. Be in joy. More than anything else, he showed us that real law is a law of love. Very simply because God is love. And that our life is a law of giving and receiving. Because the eternal circuits of cause and effect always swing back upon themselves. So we're called to believe love. To believe in love. I think that, yes, it's, it's what I was saying early on when I was introducing this song earlier than it came, that no matter what you think is going on, come on, this is the perfect place for it, I'm realizing. Because the idea here is that no matter what is going on, are you willing to believe love? Can you dig deep enough so that the time comes when it all makes sense? Come on, Brannis McKenzie. Tell us about Believe in Love. No. 
no matter what you think is going on, believe in love, no matter if you can't find right or wrong, believe in love, just because it sets you straight, and the time will come. When it all makes sense And just imagine what you create Oh, believe in love No matter what the world is telling you Believe in love Behind it is this world undaunted truth Just imagine what you can be. I'm talking about yes, a love that heals you. Talking about yes, a love that feels you. Talking about yes, a love that holds you and a love yeah, that enfolds you. Talking about yes, a love miraculous. Love, spectacular, talking about there's a love that's flying high. There's a love, my, my, my. Oh, believe in love, no matter what the world is telling you. This world undaunted truth. Believe in love, no matter what your eyes think they see. And the time will come when it all makes sense. And just imagine what you can be. I'm talking about. There's a love that rises up And a love, yeah, that surprises us I'm talking about There's a love that knows no blame And a love, yes, that knows no shame Talking about There's a love with a given heart And a love where we're all apart A love Forgives us all. It's a love where we all stand tall. Talking about a love that heals you and a love, yes, that feels you. Talking about there's a love that holds you, yeah, yeah, and enfolds you. I'm talking about there's a love miraculous and a love. Spectacular talking about there's a love that's flying high. There's a love, my, my, my. Yes. Oh, there's a love, my, my, my. Yeah. Oh, I believe. Today, though, I'm choosing to go a little different way because our focus is love. And so I'm sharing with you again from Emmett Fox's Treatment for Divine Love. 
And so I'm going to ask you to just to be with me in a centered way to assume the position, whatever that is for you, allowing your eyelids to close, holding your, your body, your being in an erect way so that if you were to envision a golden cord from the heavens, from the sky, from the ceiling, touching the very crown chakra of your being and running right through your chakras to the floor, to the ground, that whatever that position would be, or lying out straight or sitting in lotus, but whatever it is for you, be willing to be still in that way. And just breathe in in a conscious, intentional way with awareness that the very source, the living one, the strong one, is breathing us, each and every one of us, that right now I know and I know that I know that I am being breathed by the living one, the strong one, the source of all that is. And that I am breathing the breath of the living one, the strong one. That I am living the life of the living one, the strong one, the divine source. And that divine source, the living one, the strong one, is living me. And that this is true for each and every one of us. Each and every one of us is living the life of the strong one, the living one. And each and every one of us is being lived by the life of source, divine source. And so right where we are right now in this divine and perfect knowing, I declare in the words of Emmett Fox, my soul is filled with divine love. How can it be otherwise? I am living the life of the divine, breathing the breath of the divine, and it is breathing and living me. My soul is filled with divine love. I am surrounded by divine love. This I know. I radiate love and peace to the world. I have conscious divine love. God is love, and there is nothing in existence but God and its self-expression. All humans are expressions of divine love. Therefore, I can meet with nothing but the expression of divine love. Come on, God. Yes. Come on, living one, strong one, source. Yes. All is God. All is love. All is living. All is source. That's all I can ever be in contact and relationship with. Nothing ever takes place but the self-expressing of divine love. All of this is true now. This is the actual case, the actual state of affairs. I don't have to bring, try and bring this about. I observe it as already being so right now. Divine love is the actual nature of all being. There is only divine love, and I know this as my truth, as the truth. I perfectly understand and accept what divine love is. I have conscious realization of divine love. The love of the divine, of perfect source, of the living one, the strong one, burns in me for all humanity. I am a lamp of God, radiating divine love to all I meet. To all whom I think of or consider, I forgive everything that can possibly need forgiveness. Positively everything. Divine love fills my heart and all is well. 
I now radiate love to the whole universe, excluding no one, no thing. In so doing, I experience divine love. I demonstrate divine love. And I give thanks for this. I give thanks for the love that permeates my being. I give thanks for divine love guiding my way. I give thanks for the power of this word. I give thanks that the power that fuels this word is truth, is the very love of the divine itself. Oh, I just give thanks. It is an absolute perfect gratitude that I release this word into the perfect activity of law, which I know is divine love. So it's love upon love upon love upon love. Oh, the blessings unfold top to bottom, side to side, in and throughout. We are blessed. I let it be. And I seal this for all eternity by simply saying, Ashe, Amen. And so it is. Yes, y'all, love truly matters.